Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the reed switch and we're going to answer the question what is a reed switch and how can I use a reed switch in my Arduino projects? And the good news is reed switches are very cheap and very easy to code for. A reed switch is an electric switch operated by a magnetic field. It consists of two ferromagnetic contacts called reeds enclosed in a small glass tube and filled with inert gas. When a magnetic field is brought near the switch, the two contacts are drawn together, completing a circuit. And when the magnetic field is removed, the contacts separate and the circuit is broken. Reed switches are commonly used in applications that require a reliable, non-contact switch, such as security systems and proximity sensors. In healthcare, you may find them in implantable medical devices, such as a defibrillator. In these devices, the reed switch is used to detect the position of a magnet, it's placed over the device and that way it can be programmed or adjusted without the need of surgery. In the automotive industry, you may find them in door and window switches, speed sensors, fuel level sensors, and anti-lock braking systems. Just to name a few, there are lots of others and you can check those out if you want. So we're going to look at a setup here in just a second, but I wanted to show you the code and we're going to put the read switch pin on pin 2 of our Arduino. We're going to put a buzzer pin at pin 3 and we're going to connect an LED and we're going to connect that to pin 8. And the setup, we're going to set our read switch pin, which is pin 2, as an input with an internal pull-up resistor. And if you're brand new, you may be wondering what an internal pull-up is. That's just a mode that activates an internal pull-up resistor on the Arduino's input pin, the pin 2. And the reason we use those is uh, to provide a default logic high state for a pin that's normally open or unconnected such as a push button or a switch that connects to ground. And when the switch or button is connected to a digital input pin and the switch is not pressed, the pin will be left at what's called floating. And it may be unreliable, high or low state. And as you can imagine, this could cause problems when trying to read the state of the pin in your code. So by enabling an internal pull-up resistor, the pin is connected to a voltage, in our case 5 volts, which provides a reliable logic high state when uh, the, the switch is not pressed. When the switch is pressed, it'll connect the pin to ground and this will override the pull-up resistor and force the pin to a low state. And this makes it much easier to detect when the switch or button is actually being pressed. We're also going to set up our buzzer pin, our piezo buzzer as an output, our LED as an output, and then down in the loop, we're going to read the state of the read switch and uh, if the switch is closed, the buzzer will come on, the light will come on, and you'll get a, you'll get a, um, a signal here or a, it'll, a message on your serial monitor saying the door is open. And all this will continue for five seconds, and you can change that to whatever time you want. After the five seconds, the buzzer will turn off, the LED will turn off, and the alarm will reset. Now let's go ahead and see this in action. By the way, here is the diagram that shows you the exact wiring for what we're doing right now. Here are my magnets. It's actually three flat magnets in a plastic case. And once that magnetic field interacts with my reed switch, it should activate the light and the buzzer for five seconds and then go off and reset the alarm. As you see, I didn't have to get very close because this magnet is very strong, these three together. But uh, you don't need one necessarily this strong. But um, it does work and it resets the alarm afterwards. So if you open the door and the magnet comes in uh, close proximity with your read switch, it'll turn that alarm on. This is the wiring for the next setup we're going to do here real quick. One thing you want to notice is the three wires from the LED strip. You don't want to provide power for your 10 LEDs directly from your Arduino board. Instead, you can use a 5 volt breadboard power supply that's capable of 700 milliamp. If you connect more than 10 LEDs, you want to change your power supply to something that can pull more amps without overheating. There's a lot of different ways you can set up your read switch project. This is just another simple way. It's a similar setup, except we're using an 8 ohm speaker instead of a piezo buzzer. And instead of a 5 millimeter LED, single LED, we have a strip of LEDs. This is the WS2812B LEDs, addressable LEDs. And once I activate the read switch, it'll play a tune on here. And then this will light up a couple times. It'll stay solid for five seconds. And then the whole thing will reset. And there you see it. And it'll stay on for five seconds and then go off. You can really create whatever you want. This is just another basic 
uh, thing that you can do with the read switch. Here's the code for the second uh, setup that we just saw, and I will have all this code, uh, both of them, posted to the Facebook page. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Make sure to leave your comments and suggestions down in the uh, comment section. Check the description to see how to find this on Facebook, and we'll see you again very soon.